Hello guys, this is Suresh from Hizrat Automation channel. Today in this session, we're going to start a new series for API testing and which is nothing but API automation. So we have seen this API testing and API automation using a Postman tool and also we have seen on the rest assured. And the first question that may come uh, into your mind, is it possible to automate APIs using a Python? Right, you may be wondering whether we can do or not. I mean, if people are more keen about Java or other languages, they may be not knowing the whether Python will support the API or not. So this session will help you to resolve that conflict. So is it possible or not? So the answer is yes, we can do API automation with the Python. And you may be wondering why we have selected this Python when we have other languages too. The advantage we have in the Python is it is one of the popular programming language and it is also called as high level language and objective oriented programming language and the syntaxes for this Python is very simple and we have seen right in the rest assured automation where the syntax are little lengthy and it is easy but the lint syntax are a bit lengthy and in the Python the advantage we have is simple context I mean simple syntaxes right so the advantages we have with the python is one is a simple syntax like a one line code you can write and play around and we have a large ecosystem where python provides a largest ecosystem where you can handle multiple calls like it may be http request or request parsing like json xmls and you can validate responses as well so this kind of ecosystem we have in the built-in and we have in number of libraries we have within the Python and it can support multiple protocols like protocols it may be HTTP, Rust, SOAP and GraphQL there are more protocols that may be supported with the Python and this is the advantage we have with the Python and one, is, one advantage we have is a data manipulation and validation so it is easy to manipulate and validate the data in the Python due to the Python built-in libraries and integrating with third-party libraries. You may be asking this question, any packages or libraries available to automate at present? I wanted to know anything that you have. So in that, we have a request. It is one of the library. And then we have a PyHTTP test and we have PyRest test. Like these are like couple of libraries. I just picked a couple of them and we have more libraries too. We can go deeper if you wanted to go specific to library to library how we can automate the APIs. We can go deeper and we'll see all that. And for now, in this session, I'm keenly focused on the request levels. So request level libraries, how we can use that request library, how we can automate. So we will see that in this session. All right. Uh, so after knowing all the libraries, we need to know what are the IDEs that we can select for this doing uh, API automation with PyCharm. So the first question and uh, first option that we have is a PyCharm. So then after you have a VS code, then after you have a Eclipse. So this ID is based on your usage, whichever ID you are comfortable, you can select and proceed further. And we will see PyCharm and we will also see the VS code. So we have a different libraries we have. So for each library, we will go with the one one tool and where you can see how we can create and how we can connect a Git remote and how we can push our project into the Git remote space. So we will see all of that. So what else we have? Let's code and see. So, so far we have discussed about introduction. Now we will see how we can install PyCharm into the Windows operating system. And it may be Linux or Mac OS. So same thing you have to do. You have to download the exe file and uh, you have to install it. So go to any browser. In my case, I'm opening this and uh, type for PyCharm download and PyCharm is offered by JetBrains you can see this this first link I will share this link in the description you can find it from there and then after you click on that first link and then you have the PyCharm uh, professional version and uh, let me scroll down if I can see any community edition so I will accept it so we have the PyCharm community edition as well so for the initial programmers or if they wanted to practice something, they can go with the community edition. So once you are familiar with the community edition, then you can go for the professional edition where it is a licensed version where you can uh, opt for pricing and you can install it. For now, I'm using this community edition. 
and once it downloaded I will start installation process yeah I think it's done so I will click and open that exe file right it will ask for the verification yes no from the computer administrator permission so once it started the widget will look like this now you can see the welcome to the Python community edition setup and click to continue next and then you have it is asking you to where we need to set up this installation uh, process like uh, which folder basically you can select this this folder and it will also ask you to for uninstallation of older version as well where you can delete the older version in case if you have so I wanted to go with the latest version for this session so I will select this one option also so where it will uninstall the older version and install the newer version and uh, yeah so click next again and then it will ask you to create a desktop icon and uh, there is one step that you need to do is update path in the variables so this is need to be restarted I mean system needs to be restarted but anyhow you add a path here and later on you can restart the your computer and uh, after that just click on next and yeah we can click on next again so it's it will start installing into our system all right it is asking for me to do a re reboot so I will do it later on I will do a manual reboot later so I will select this option and click on finish right we have successfully done our PyCharm installation so click start and type PyCharm yeah this is the community edition that we just installed select it all right after installing the PyCharm uh, once we open it will open like this as I have already uh, older projects so it will display over there but I wanted to start a new project so I will click on new project here and uh, you can change the theme of uh, this one on the IDE like you can go to the customization here and you can change the theme of your uh, IDE like dark and light version and I will go to the projects and I will click on new project and it will ask you to name the project so as it uh, API testing right so I will say API testing project right I'm using the Python interpreter as 10 so I will show you how to install that uh, Python as well but uh, as we install the uh, IDE I will just complete this uh, new project creation so once I click on create it will create a new project here and uh, how to install this Python into system so for that what I will do I will go back to the browser and this time we will install the Python so you will go to any browser type Python and go to the downloads then you have this Python download click on that file and it will download and click and open the exe then it will show you this widget where you will say that install now and customize the installation and then you have these two options at the bottom but don't forget to click this option add python exe to your path so this you have to do it so that it will add a environment variables by default no you don't need to go and add manually it will by default add those and it will save your time and after that you need to click on install now and it will say uh, SR no administration permission so click yes and it will start installing and this is a simple process to install both PyCharm and the Python I have to show you first Python installation then after PyCharm installation but somehow we have started reverse yeah after that it says that successfully installed click close and you need to come back to your IDE so this is IDE and I will close this so one thing you can do is after installing Python you just need to see from the command prompt or run prompt like uh, in the windows you can see uh, windows key and R key and click on CMD it will open a console prompt and you can just type pi I mean as we install the Python just to see whether Python is correctly configured or not you can see by this just type pi and hit enter if you see this version number and then followed by this console editor 
once you see this then you are successfully configured your python into your system and click close now in the pycharm editor so we have created a project and this is a project we have and under that project there is a one ven we created here you can see this virtual environment is created and this virtual environment is the most important one in the pycharm or a python project whenever you're working with the uh, projects like in the pycharm or with python you have to create a virtual environment system and the same thing applicable for vs code as well whenever you're working we have to create the virtual environment so by default it has created now but in case if it is not visible to you then in the project go to this files go to this settings and uh, go to your project so here you have project then you have a python interpreter so here the interpreter is pointing to 3.10 but our version is 3.2 right so what i will do i will try to see show all i think it's not there here so what i will do i will select it and click on minus minus and i will try to add a new python interpreter so python interpreter right now it is showing only 3.10 but uh, in case if it is showing a newer version which is uh, in my case it's 3.12 i think it's 3.10 but yeah somehow if it is a different version you are showing up there click the latest version and uh, if it is not even showing here just use this three dots and navigate where the python is installed so if you wanted to know where python is installed again go to this run prompt and type where python so this is the locations right so the f the version we are using i mean we are seeing is 3 th 310 the python 310 but we have also 312 as well so this is the 312 version so for now oh, i will copy this 312 and i will do the same thing here right so we have this python here and 312 i will select this version so this is a manually how you can select the python interpreter so once you selected that then uh, it is saying that because as we already have virtual environment in our system this ok button is not enabled so to enable that you have to again change the location of the directory of virtual environment so i will select this python projects or what i can do i will select some other location you can use any location other than the current location then i will create one new directory here api project so under this api project folder i will create a virtual environment right now you can see this ok button is enabled so in case in your case if it is not enabled so don't worry you need to create that virtual environment in a newer location then it will resolve so click on ok and this is the most important task guys this uh, virtual environment you have to set up so then only you can start working on with your project so click on ok now it is done so you can see here pip version is also there it is it is also taking the package version of pip with 23.2.1 and click on apply click on ok right now you can see there is a bottom you will have this updating so once the updating of interpreter is done we can start using this pycharm for our api automation so i will give a one more minute yeah all done now in the pycharm there are many options we will go one by one option whenever we come across to that such options so one big advantage with the pycharm is we have an inbuilt terminal here so you can use this terminal to run the commands run installation so you can do anything as part of this api automation we need to install one library which is a request so for that i will use pip install hyphen u this is a capital u and a request so this all are in the lower case so hit enter and it will start downloading the libraries of requests so this is done next thing we need is pytest library so pytest library i will mention this things in the description you can find it from there 
and for that installation of pytest the syntax will be pip install hyphen u pytest right so this is the installing of our two libraries main libraries one is request one is pytest so two libraries are done so to see what all libraries you have in your python or pycharm just type pip list so this will get the libraries which are already been there with you or which is installed like in this case you have this uh, few libraries that in that we installed request we installed pytest and we have getting the pip as well so these are the libraries we have at present and i will minimize this now this is our project folder and under that we have virtual environment and we can start creating a directories and we can start so we'll go to new directory right with this our setup is completely done so we did with the installation process then setup process in the pycharm so both things are done so we will see how we can start writing our first api test using a python which is a request library so let's see before we get into this we need to know what are the open apis we have in the websites or open websites which can provide me some apis where i can practice and work on to my knowledge so for that you go to browser and open a new tab and type uh, request response r e q r e s so this is a very useful website where you can find the open apis and you can practice and uh, do some experiments with this request so you can say test your front end against the real apis and these are fake data but you can use it uh, for your practice purpose and uh, from this we will see for so get single user so i will use this uh, url with the endpoint so once i click on this you will see this is the endpoint so i will copy this endpoint get request we don't need any payload payload in the sense we don't need to send data or we don't need to create anything as part of get api get api is used to hit the server get the response so with the endpoint with the query parameters it will hit the rest it, it will hit the server and it will get the response and response in the format of json if it is a rest api if it is a soap you will get an xml base if it is a graphql you will get a json response right so this we will see and we'll go to our pycharm again and we created one folder or directory there right I will click on new I will click on Python file so this is a get API right so I will say test get API right and I will mention that endpoint so we got endpoint right so I will so I will name that as endpoint endpoint equals this and in python we don't need a declaration whichever variable that we are i mean we are using like in this case endpoint i mentioned is a string if i mention number that will turn as an integer if i mention it as a double quotation that that will be turned as a string so this is advantage we have in the python unlike in the other coding language you have to provide the data type as well we don't need to do that one here and the first thing we have to do some imports so import import request library so we have installed request library so we have to do that one and we have to do import json and import so that the other library we need to import is pytest right these are the three required things that we need to do so we got endpoint we got libraries installed we got packages to be imported then we will start writing our class method or method so in the python every method will be starting with a definition so def it is a definition so def test and get api endpoint and and with colon right so in the python whenever we are working with pycharm or pytest everything that we write right that should start with the test or end with the test 
if it is not starting with test or end with test it will not treat that as a test condition so i started with test right so we have to start in that syntax and either you start with test or end with test so both thing can be accepted in the syntax as per signature so response i'm naming uh endpoint or hitting an endpoint i'm naming that as an response so because using this request library i'm calling the get api so get api will accept the endpoint so endpoint i have here so i will name it as request here now so i'm calling the request library or request class from that i am telling use the get call so get will call me my endpoint so this is the endpoint so this line so once i hit the get api i should get something in return so that will be stored in the response so that response is a variable here and in the next line i can add some assertions so i will add simple assertion so that it will be easier for you to practice asset response so response and from that response what i will get is dot status code so i will get the status code status code equals to 200 whether my status code is 200 or not we will see now after executing this but i'm expecting status code 200 after that what i will do i just try to print uh, that entire response i'm not sure what is there in my response but status code should be there if my get endpoint is successfully executed then it will get me a 200 status code so that is an expected thing but response i was not knowing that what response i will get in the endpoint so for that reason i'm just printing it so click save and i will just run this file now you can see it has executed i think one assertion is being passed i will pull this up test case is passed but i was expecting a response printing a response but the response is not printed here all right i will do one correction here so in the print statement so i'm just printing the response so what i will do is i will convert that as a text type so i will convert that response as text type then we will execute this piece of code now you can see it has executed one and it's saying as hundred percent now you can see the response is coming here with the form of text so this is a response we got it and if we go and see the website so this is the response we have so entire response we got it as text there now i will create another python class so this is test underscore post underscore api right and i will close this terminal for time being so now what we need to do is we need to get a post api request so i'm going to take this one so which i will open in a new tab then i will see this endpoint so this endpoint which is talking about creating so creating a user so go back to the pycharm in the post api request we call a data which we will create in the database called as payload so i will name the same thing payload equals and the object so this is our object right so this object is json object okay i need to copy this first so this is a json object right so this after getting this i need to have endpoint as well endpoint so for endpoint so this is my endpoint so this variable whichever data i am providing it will be setting to that data type like uh, in this case it's a string if i provide some numbers it will be integer so similar to that and now what i will do i will create a definition of a method so def and this will be test underscore so post request and with colon now we got a payload we got endpoint so how we need to hit it and get the response in the post api so in the similar manner as what we did in the get api we have to create a variable called response so this is a response 
and then we can start with the request so request dot post now in the post you can provide two things here as it's a post request we need to give the endpoint so i will mention as endpoint comma so the payload the payload is in the form of json so what i will do i will give json equals i think i need to import this json so let's give a try payload so for this i will import json i think uh, i need to provide right name i think in all lowercase all right so i just provided the payload as well and after that hitting the request i need to validate a response so i will do an assertion here asset response dot status code status code what i will receive for the status code for creating a data in the database the post will create a data in the database so if i go back to this request response there you will see the status code is 201 so I'm, I will be doing the same thing. I will expect 201 as a status code. And now after that status code, now what I will do, I will need to get all the data which is in the response. So to get that response, I will create a JSON underscore response equals JSON dot loads. response dot text so entire response i'm converting into a text and where we did the same thing for the get api where after receiving or capturing the rest json i'm just uh, converting that as a text right so till here we will control and we will we will save it and we will use a print statement here print json response so i'll save it now i will right click here and hit run now you can see it has performed 100 percent done and the response what we received is name morpheus job and id and then created it now if i go back to the website this is as per the response here so this is how we get the response after hitting a database creation so this post request will help us to create data in the database and we will get the response like this and after hitting this request we got the response here and uh, we did not added any resp i mean assertions here we just added only one assertion here now we will try to add more assertions like uh, this one we need a payload as this this request is about a post so this payload will help us to create a data so my data will be name so I will modify this name for our example and then this is the data I wanted to create. So this is my endpoint and I will just right click and hit enter and this will create a data record in the database. Now you can see here we just used a payload. So payload to give a name and job then the endpoint and in the endpoint after that we have this method. And in the method, we just given a request library using a request library. We have taken a request and then we hit a post and we just added one assertion here. Assertion is response dot status code 200 or 201. So this is the assertion I have given. And now what I will do, I will remove this line from here. Right. So in the response, you will see this ID right here. We have ID. For example, if I go back and this is a post request. And in the post request, we have this ID, right? So I will go back there and I will add assertion towards that. So how are we going to add that assertion here? So this json.loads method will be parsing the entire string or we can say the entire text of the response and convert that to the Python directory where I can easily parse and get the or add the assertions towards that. For this, I will add assertion towards ID. For to add ID assertion, I just need to get that ID right first. So I will say ID equals and uh, JSON response. 
so in the entire JSON response I need to find whether ID is available or not first thing so I will say ID and uh, yeah right and if I say if ID in JSON response right and with semicolon and print that ID so print ID then after that I will use else condition else print no ID found right so let's quickly run this program and see so I'm expecting ID to be in the part of my response if ID is there then print that ID else tell this message in the response or I mean in the message console message right I just executed it now you can see it is saying that no ID found but uh, it's supposed to get that response all right so here I did a small mistake here so instead of finding the ID here what I will need to do is I just need to pass this ID so which is a string here so I'm passing this string and verifying against the JSON response so JSON response contains the entire data right so in that I will I will be checking this ID is there or not then if it is there then what I will do I will get this ID here so in the first line we did right ID equal to JSON response ID so finding that ID where it is ID so I'm getting that ID here so I'll right click and run this program right I think this time it ran so we just did small mistake where uh, I'm trying to get the value but uh, what I am doing here in the if condition is I'm checking the value within the string entire JSON is the key value pair right so I'm just trying to search with the value instead of key so that's the thing so we just corrected it right now it is working so this is the one way of writing assertion and uh, I will add one more assertion like uh, asset so so we just got this ID right how we got so it's in the similar manner we can write more assertions like uh, here we are using this response variable so I will copy that response variable representation and I will put it here response dot JSON and in the JSON method then we have this string or key so the key is here the name so if you go back to here and if you see the response this is the name and this is the name against a value so I will copy this name and put it here and I will try to verify whether this key contains the name so name is this Rish and I will check whether it's available or not so right click and run I think it is passed you can see it is passed there is no failures here right again I will do one more assertion so that is the one way of writing response dot JSON then key or I can do one thing I can directly call the key like name but here uh, the one thing is I am providing the key here but I am suspecting this will not get found but one thing we just did is this ID right so this is ID so I can directly put this ID ID equals double equals what is the ID so here it is ID is 2 to 7 so I will try to give 2 to 7 here right and one more type of assertion is assert json response json response dot get so i can use this get method as well so in the get method i will provide name name and double equals the name so you can see here there is one mistake i did here so I will do an execution but I will tell you later on after execution but uh, try to pause this video and mention that what I did a mistake here so I will save this and run again now you can see 
it has performed but there is a failure there is a failure it is saying that 778 is not equal to 227 because expected to be 227 here this id i am expecting as a 227 but i got 778 because we are putting a post request right so we are not doing a patch request we are doing a post request so id will keep on get change and the one thing is here the id which i took right so whenever i get a response that id will be 778 so i'm verifying against 227 which is the older one so this is a mistake i did before running this program and if i modify this even that it will get failed because id keep on gets updated so this is the one way of writing assertion this is another way and this is the id that you cannot call directly but you have to call a variable representing json response with a key so key is id so under that id whatever value is there i am putting that here and json response dot get you can use this one as well right so this is what we discussed in the last session so what i will do i will go back to this folder and i will create a new python file so this is test put api right so in this what i will do so put api so go back to the browser and type for request response dot in so i will share this link don't worry so this is a put api so this is a mock api so this i wanted to try so this is the end point so this is the end point i'll go back here and i will say that end point so end point equals so this is the end point and what i will do is this i will not give here so this end point i will not give here but instead i will give it in within the request put method so i will remove from here and then after this request required a payload so payload is something we are trying to modify right so payload payload so what payload i need to pass so the payload is this so this this is a payload i need to pass and yeah right so this is a payload i need to modify within the data so in the post request whatever data that we created right this will modify that data so now the definition the method definition starts with test and this is a put request right put request and with a semicolon now the variable response equals so what is this we need to provide here the name the name of our api is request i mean request library request library dot put so in the put api so first thing i need to provide is endpoint so endpoint is this and uh, endpoint we have not provided the path of that endpoint so for that what i will do i will use the concatenation symbol and in the string i will provide the endpoint so go back to this browser and here this is the endpoint so this is the put and this is the endpoint i'll provide this endpoint here so it's supposed to be here then after i need to pass the payload so for that i will use the json so json equals payload right now i need to import the json as well here import json right so after giving this request so request put headers and payload details after that i need to create an assertion assert response dot status code double equals 200 so it's the same status code that we expect for put so this is 200 and you can add more assertions like we discussed in the last session right you can add uh, the assertions like that 
json response equals and json dot loads so this will loads my entire response so response dot text so this method will help me to parse the entire string and convert to the python directory and after that i can use some conditions or i can simply call the assets so for that i will go back here so this is the response to be expected so here we are modifying the name and the job right so i will capture this name so i will add assert i will use json response json response dot dot get so in the get i will provide the name and in the name i will give the value of that name so what name i'm modifying here so this is the name after modifying right so i will control save and right click and run this program right it has successfully done it has executed you can see there is no failures here so this is how we can perform put api request automation using a request library in python so here we have one api request which is for delete so this delete will create or delete the record from the database so after providing a, a data record id so it will delete the entire record so after deleting the record what else we will find in the response we will find nothing so this response should give me nothing but status code should be 204 it's not 200 it's not 201 so it's a 204 so we will create automation for this api only now so go back to pycham and so far we have discussed all about get post put now i will right click and create a new python file so this is about a test delete api right so for this also the endpoint will be common so this is the endpoint for two so this is the endpoint which is about uh, users hyphen two i mean user users two sorry not hyphen it's a forward slash and this is the endpoint so we don't need any payload to be provided for the deleting because it's a id we are providing as a query parameter here so definition test then delete request right now we need to provide the response as a variable name response equal to request dot delete delete and endpoint will be this so we don't need any payload for here so we just need uh, assertion here assertion response dot status code double equals 204 so i'm expecting this json response status code as 204 and we don't we don't have anything to be get the response but what I will do is I will try to print the response. So for that, what I can do is JSON underscore response. So this is just variable name, just naming convention. You can use any name here, not only JSON underscore response. You can use any name. So here, what I will do is uh, JSON dot loads. I think I need to import the JSON. right loads right response dot text and i can use the print statement print json response as we know that this delete will not give any response but we can try to see if there is any response coming up so execute now we can see there is 100% success 
and you can see there is some error I think this is it is correct right so json dot loads response text okay anyhow we don't have anything to be convert right so that is the reason i guess it is giving error because we don't have any response to convert to text so i guess it's working so 100 percent success and 204 if i change this to 202 and remove this thing so we don't need anything to be checked in the response just run this program and uh, you will see that it is failed because we are expecting 204 but we given 202 right so we have covered get post put and uh, delete apis as part of this session on the request library for python so we will see more contents upcoming so stay tuned and if you have any questions queries you can post in my comment section i will help you out and if you are new to my channel do subscribe to my channel thank you for watching